What is up YouTube? Let's talk about some things that you should know about before upgrading to Tractor Pro 3. If you're a Tractor Pro 2 user like I was and you're considering upgrading to Tractor Pro 3, there's maybe a few things that you should know before upgrading to Tractor Pro 3. Now recently Native Instruments have been making a lot of hoo-ha about their latest Tractor Pro 3 update. So the release of Tractor Pro 3 definitely had a lot of promotion behind the campaign. And one thing I can pretty much say is that the focus of the Tractor Pro 3 software is not the software itself. From my experience, it seems like the core focus of Tractor Pro 3 was on the new line of Tractor hardware, the S2 and the S4 MK3. So I've been using Tractor Pro since the early days, since before it is even considered like the Tractor Pro software, before it was still called uh, Tractor DJ Studio. And I recently upgraded to Tractor Pro 3, and I want to tell you guys a few things to look out for in the updating process. So I myself am not a Native Instruments Tractor hardware user. I've got a Tractor audio sound card which I use for gigs, but I never invested in the S2 or the S4 or the X1 or any of those controllers. I wanted a system that was a little bit more malleable. I wanted a system that I could set my own mappings for, and if you know updates came out with new features, I could change the mapping to how I wanted the system to work. I could incorporate new features as I go without having to worry about buying the next MK3 or MK4 model. So I decided to go with the Launchpad Pro. Reason being is you have the ability to create all sorts of your own like custom mappings and you're not limited to only you know triggering drums. It kind of works with these kind of faders systems as well. So you've got pretty vast control over however you want to set the system up to work. I've always kind of used a system like this. I never bothered to get Tractor hardware as much as I, you know, respect the quality of the hardware that they're putting out. And I think it's great what they're doing for, you know, beginner DJs who don't necessarily know about the mappings and stuff like that. From a user who's not necessarily a hardware user, the latest update was a little bit underwhelming for lack of a better word. Now I'm not saying that there weren't some cool features in the update, I just feel that the level of marketing and promotion behind the campaign didn't match up to the experience that I had when I first opened Tractor Pro 3. It might just be because I'm kind of, for lack of a better word, I'm a power user and I create my own mappings and all sorts of stuff like that. So the first thing I did when I opened up the software was I dived into the preferences menu and I try to look for new preferences that weren't in Tractor Pro 2. And it doesn't look like they've added a whole lot on the back end side of things. After seeing the official sort of release notes and seeing, you know, what features are going to be in the latest update, it seems like their core focus with the Tractor Pro 3 update was with the visuals and with the graphics. Which is weird because there's still a couple of, you know, core issues that stood out in Tractor Pro 2, which I wish they could have sort of concentrated on but I'll get into that a little bit later in the video. It seems like they've redesigned the interface to make it seem you know, clearer and flatter and more streamlined, as they say. But to be honest with you, it looks exactly the same. The only difference is they've kind of changed the color palette and maybe moved some buttons around and taken off the sort of, taken away the sort of 3D you know, image from the buttons so that it looks kind of flatter, but in terms of like new sort of design concepts and stuff like that, you know, I'm not like a graphic designer or anything, so I can't say for sure, but it doesn't seem like this is a huge deal. Definitely not a, a big enough deal to become a, a headline in a official update, you know? Maybe if it was a 0.3, 0.1 or, you know, Tractor Pro 2.9.1 or 2.9.2, then give it a headline, new layout or something like that. But I'm a little bit underwhelmed, just to be honest with you guys. So another big feature that they're using as a headline in this uh, sort of promotion is a new kind of sound. They say that they've redesigned the sound engine and they've redesigned the master limiter and uh, certain things like that, which could be a good thing, I guess. Um, I think it's one of those things similar to kind of like the redesigned interf interface where it's almost a sort of non-quantifiable uh, sort of specification. So it's easy for them to kind of slap onto an update and say, oh, it sounds better, you know? I'm sure it does sound better because maybe the tracks that people listen to now produce better or who knows what, you know? Generally, when, you know, when products say an update sounds better, I generally take that with a pinch of salt because it generally just means that there's more processing in the chain. And it might sound better, but it's not going to be more accurate, if that makes sense. 
So I'm still not sure. I haven't really spent too much time with the software. This just seems a little bit fishy um, considering something that I'm gonna show you guys a little bit later on in the video. So the next big feature that they've integrated is this new thing called uh, Mixer FX, which is essentially um, in Tractor, you've got your uh, actual sort of mixer channels, your line channels, and you've got a filter on each of those. Now you have the ability to swap that filter out for a variety of different effects and stuff like that. So this might be a cool thing to some people, but for guys like myself who are already creating custom mappings and stuff like that, a lot of the effects that we use are on uh, sort of modifier and shift controls. So we're able to already create a lot of these types of, uh, you know, uh, triggerable effects and stuff like that by just using, you know, tricky mappings rather than having to sacrifice the filter on your line channel, which is a pretty uh, important thing in modern mixing, in my opinion, rather than having to sacrifice that for like a reverb, which you can just grab from one of your uh, two, or even you can load up four channels of effects in Tractor anyway. I kind of don't really see the point of this feature, but it's kind of going in line with the new club standard of mixes. Um, that have these kind of things. I think Native Instruments is kind of just trying to make the Tractor software look a little bit more like what you would expect a club mixer to look like when uh, sort of in, in reality, which I suppose is a cool thing. But again, it's this is not a highlight. Uh, it's definitely not something that uh, is a sort of standalone highlight in a, uh, an official, you know, version update. And this is something you could see in maybe a 0.5 update or something like that. This is just my opinion though. So, you know, give me your thoughts in the comments if you do disagree or if you agree or anything like that, let me know. So the next thing is pretty major, but to be honest with you, it's something that should have been incorporated very long ago. And again, it's a little bit underwhelming uh, that they've just kind of slapped it on there and called it a day. And it seems like they could have done a lot more. Um, they could have added quite a few extra things uh, in terms of uh, this kind of idea. So they've added the ability to play back a track in reverse, you know, with a, a switch of a button, you can flip your track to play in reverse. So what would have been cool is maybe some other features just to kind of add to the sort of value that customers are getting from this update, because it seems like those are pretty much the only updates. Apart from the fact now that uh, Scratch users are being included in the package, you no longer have to buy a separate license if you're using digital vinyl systems and stuff like that. But again, I'm not, and I'm sure a lot of Tractor users are not using DVS platforms. I'm sure a lot of Tractor users are in fact not even using the Native Instruments hardware. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are sitting in the same position that I was a few days ago, considering the update. And I think you should maybe just hold off on it. Um, if you're a Tractor Pro 2 user, I'd probably hold off on the update because 49 US dollars is a bit steep, considering the entire software package is $100. So you're literally paying half price to update with features that aren't really gonna change your DJing experience all that much. However, that being said, new users, if you've never used Tractor Pro before, I think $100 is the cheapest that a full version of Tractor has ever gone for. I think I paid uh, quite a bit more than that when first getting into the Tractor platform. So for new users, I think this is definitely the time to get into the platform. I think for Tractor Pro 2 users, maybe hold out a little bit, except if you want new mixer effects. Um, some of the pros that I can maybe say from the latest update is it seems like the, it seems like the software is a lot better with CPU usage. Loading times is, drastically reduced. Um, I know I used to have problems with Tractor Pro 2 where it used to take me um, specifically on my desktop PC upwards of like 10 minutes to load up the software. Now Tractor Pro 3 loads up in, a, like, in less than a minute. So that's definitely cool. I'm not sure if it's got to do with the fact that maybe I have less preferences loaded up, but I did uh, import all my preferences from two to three when I did the update. So this brings me onto an issue that I've been having with Tractor for a little while. Originally, when the STEM system was introduced into Tractor, they advertised that the system would be able to support uncompressed or lossless audio, and it's never been able to. When you load WAV, AIFF, ACC, any of the lossless audio formats, when you load them into the STEM creator and you bounce out an audio file, it's the same size as just one of the five audio files that you're importing it into, but yet it's supposed to hold all of those five files of information or data. So how can it be uncompressed when it's literally holding a fifth 
of the information. Again, after the upgrade to Tractor Pro 3, I'd expect maybe with the new software that they've updated the Stem Creator tool to finally work, because myself and another few producers have been bringing it up on the support forum for quite a while now. So it's something that I just expected to kind of be introduced into the Pro 3 update, at least into this future, you know, rebuild of Tractor that they've kind of been planning for a while now. So anyway, I got a response from them and I wanna show you guys Maybe you can help me understand this a little bit. So the response was, hi Dash, the following file types compatible with Tractor are listed in the article below. And he posted me to a link which basically says, Wave, AIFF, ACC, and all the stuff that I've tried is supported by the stems. And here he says, you could potentially attempt to make a stem file using Wave, AIFF, or FLAC files, tried all three, making the stem pretty much uncompressed. What does pretty much uncompressed mean? Pretty much. It's either missing data or it's got all the data. You don't get such a thing as pretty much uncompressed. Unless I'm not understanding something here. Maybe you guys can help me understand this a little bit better. What does pretty much uncompressed mean? Is that wave or is that not wave? So this, this is what kind of makes me worry about the sort of better audio that they're advertising with the latest Pro 3 update. They're making such bold statements as pretty much uncompressed. But anyway, that's just my issue that I'm dealing with with Tractor. Just thought I'd let you guys know um, that I personally feel that the Tractor Pro 3 update is a bit of a letdown if you're coming from Pro 2, although I think it's a very good deal if you're buying Tractor for the first time. So that's just my opinion about the update to Tractor Pro 3. I hope you guys understand. I hope you don't think it's too much of a ranty video. I was just feeling a little bit let down, a little bit pissed off, and maybe you guys can help me understand the whole pretty much uncompressed thing. Anyway, so, so TLDR, if you think it was too long and you didn't listen to the whole thing, if you're a Tractor Pro 2 user and you're considering upgrading to Tractor Pro 3, I'd probably suggest you did not do it because it's a little bit of a letdown. Most of the stuff that you're gonna have at your disposal in Tractor Pro 3 was already at your disposal. It just maybe looks a little cooler or it's a little bit more accessible, but it's still there in Pro 2. So you're not really paying for all that much extra. Um, if you're a brand new user to Tractor Pro 3 and you're thinking about buying Tractor for the first time, this is definitely the time to do it though, because I don't think it's been cheaper than this to, to purchase the entire software package. So this is a bit of a weird one. I'm kind of on the fence, you know, from my personal experience, I'm a little bit pissed off, but I can see how this is a good thing, you know, getting new users into the Tractor environment. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, are any of you guys feeling the same as I did? Were you Tractor Pro 2 users that just upgraded to Tractor Pro 3? Do any of you guys use Tractor Pro 3 or are most of you guys producers? Let me know in the comments. I'd be keen to hear what you guys think.